This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner of the 100 bucks that I give away every Monday is Kim Dust. She's in the entertainment industry and is currently working a full-time day job and doing her side hustle on the side. Kim, congrats. For you, here's a chance to win 100 bucks every Monday. Simply subscribe to the podcast on iTunes now and then text the word Nathan to 33444 to officially enter. Again, text the word Nathan to 33444 after you subscribe. Many people ask me how I used email to sell my first company, Heyo, and it's simple. You want to do things like open tracking so that you know when a potential buyer actually opens your email or potential new customer. You also want to set reminders so you can quickly know when to follow up with somebody if they haven't replied to you or use things like auto follow-up sequences. You can do all of this with a company called thetopinbox.com. In fact, I liked it so much I bought the whole business. Go try it for free at thetopinbox.com right now. This is episode 528. I'm Nathan Latka, and coming up tomorrow morning, you're going to learn from Guy Suter. They've raised $10 million in their pre-revenue with their company, Notion.ai. How do they raise so much money and be pre-revenue? Good morning, folks. Nathan Latka here. You're going to enjoy our guest today. His name is Nathan Barry. Many of you may know him from ConvertKit, which he is the CEO of and which he founded fairly recently, I guess, relatively speaking. The company is an email marketing company for professional bloggers. So let's get into it. Nathan, are you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. All right. Tell us real quick, uh, before we get into your story and background, what does ConvertKit do and how do you generate revenue? Yeah, so ConvertKit is a SaaS company. Uh, we have about 10,000 bloggers as customers. Um, so we send their email, you know, uh, stay in touch with their subscribers. And you can think of it as like the power of Infusionsoft, but easier to use than MailChimp. Got it. Very good. You've practiced that. That, that just slipped right off your tongue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just uh, a tagline. <laughs> That's good. That's very good. So what did you, you said you're serving 10,000 customers right now. Tell us about your financial model. I mean, how do you generate revenue? Yeah, so our pricing range is uh, based on how many subscribers you have. So our smallest account would be $29 for up to 1,000 subscribers. Okay. And then a large account for us would be up to about a million subscribers for about 3,500 a month. Okay, great. And what, what would you say your kind of average revenue per user is per month? You know, we're actually public with all of this. And so I know your, your yeah, fans... I've got, and, the bare, I've, got the, in, I've got the bare metric stuff up in front of me, and I'll link to it in the show notes, but it's always just helpful to kind of hear it in context from yeah. you. Totally. So we're at about $48 in average revenue per user. So about 65% of our customers are on that $29 a month plan. Yep. You said 48 um, or 28? Uh, 48. 48. Yep. So it's fair to say I can take the math 10,000 customers times a $48 ARPU and get to about 480 grand in MRR, which is pretty consistent with what you guys have up on Barometrics. Yeah, exactly. And we just did a huge annual plan push the last couple of days. So MRR dropped a little bit, but... Uh, Hey, we did. But cash, more cash flow is looking good, right? Cash flow is looking great. <laughs> Walk us through. I want to get into that. Um, you're. It's fortunate we have you on because you're so transparent with numbers. People are always battling between: Do I do the annual can you know plan for you know a ten percent discount and collect cash now, or do I just let them keep paying per month? And how does that affect churn, etc.? Walk through the thought process. Why did you decide to do the annual push in the last few days? Yeah. So. It has a big, the annual push has a big impact on churn. And especially when you're going after kind of a prosumer audience, you know, the lower end of the spectrum at that thousand subscribers or less, they might be trying out blogging. They might not be super well established. And so the churn is higher on those plans. So whatever we can do to decrease churn there, like an annual plan and get that commitment makes a big difference. Um, I think I'd feel weird going all annual plan only just because I like the consistent cash flow. Um, but it's nice to do an annual plan push. And we ran a Cyber Monday deal, um, and that was a good time to do an annual plan push. So we did uh, basically three months free, okay. you know, so 12 months for the price of nine. Okay, so what was that total price? Um, 
Yeah, so it ranges on the plan size, but basically, oh, okay. uh, like two hundred and sixty-one dollars would be the, you know, if you were on the base plan. And some quick numbers on that: we did a, almost three hundred thousand in annual plan revenue in two days just from from that. So we're pretty excited to get that profit in before the end of the year. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. So, so you did about three hundred grand between Monday and Tuesday on that annual plan revenue. Um, were though were or were, were all those people that were already paying monthly that upgraded, or were some of those new people that just went directly into an annual plan? There was a, a few new people, um, but for the new people, we did a different promo where we did like a first month free, mm-hmm. which because we normally don't have a free trial, you know, you pay right away up front, credit card up front, and so we did that first month free promo for our email list, and we got a thousand. Uh, new customers on that. So overall, it was a very, very successful promotion. Got it. And how big is your email list? Uh, about 40,000. And walk us through how you built that. Was it just content marketing or? Yeah, content marketing is probably half of it. And then the other half is doing webinars. So content or um, uh, partnerships and affiliates with people like uh, Pat Flynn and Chris Gillibo and a lot of other influencers around the web is a big way that we've grown our customer base. So we just say, Hey, we'll come to your audience. We'll teach them how to grow an email list, you know, marketing automation, et cetera, uh, and pay out a 30% affiliate commission to anyone who ends up signing up for a converting account. So we've probably added 25,000 subscribers to our list this year, just purely through, uh, joint venture webinars. And are you holding, you're setting up the landing page for your hosting and go to webinar and they're just emailing their list, driving the traffic to the signups. Is that how it works? Yeah, almost exactly. Okay, um, and, and we use you know a Google Hangout hybrid instead of GoToWebinar, but but yeah. What is the hybrid? So is it, is it just a pure Google Hangout where you're screen sharing a PowerPoint? Yeah, so we do Google Hangout, and then we use a, a tool called Chat Roll to have kind of that live chat interaction. And our designer just built some custom pages for it, so we can host it all, all on our site. Is there a link you nice. can link us to where we can check out how that looks? Oh, that's a good question. Can we put it in the show notes? Yeah. Do you, do you have, do you don't off the top of your head though? I don't. Oh, that's okay. okay. There, there are so many of them. We do about 10 to 20 or more webinars a month. Oh, wow. Um, so are, I, I'd have to uh, find a link. How are you finding? Okay, guys, we'll link to that in the show notes uh, after I get it. That'll be at nathanlacka.com forward slash the top five, two, eight. Again, forward slash the top five, two, eight. Uh, Nathan, walk me through this process. I mean, you know, people use webinars all the time. Some people, I think, are more focused on teaching or on doing webinars, teaching how to make money on a webinar versus actually building a real business using webinars like you are. What's your process look like? Do you have a full time person that specifically goes and hunts for new webinar partners? And if so, how do they find them? Yeah, so our, uh, you know, we we have a growth team and there's two people on that team who are involved with webinar process. Um, And so they uh, hunt down the partners, you know, we talk to all of our customers. It helps that so many of our customers have, you know, 10,000 subscribers, 50,000 or a quarter million email subscribers or something like that. So that's a great place to start. And then we just, you know, network at conferences, who's who in the blogging world, get intros, that kind of thing. Um, and so we're, we're, we're trying to do two things. You know, we're trying to get uh, someone to switch their email list from MailChimp or uh, AWeber or whatever to ConvertKit. And then later on, we're saying, hey, if this has been a great experience for you, uh, we'd love it if you'd promote it as well. And so we kind of have a lot of effort put into that like yeah. two-step direct sales process. It's always made me so jealous of your space because so the way I'd get webinar partners when I was building Heyo is I'd ask on webinars, have you had success building your list? And if so, how big's your list? And I look at the pull data from the webinar to find new webinar partners for the next time, right? Because then they, you know their list size. You yeah. have that data because they're building it on you. So it's just got beautiful viral kind of economics built into your model. Yeah, and it helps that affiliates is already a known channel. Like I talk to other people who run B2B SaaS and they're like, oh, can we try affiliates? And I'm like, sure, but how many of your customers you know, have an audience of 50,000 people that they can reach? Yeah, yeah. And so that's been an advantage for us. We also do that same technique that you do of, you know, we just ask how many subscribers do you have as a way of tailoring like the webinar content because it's really educational. Mm-hmm. But then also we save that chat and just look through it and see, oh, who should we reach out to? 100%. If someone in there said, I've got 20,000 subscribers, then you bet we're going to follow up with that person. I imagine it's a huge waste of time for you to go through all the work, setting up the landing page, sending the email copy for the partner to send and all that to then show up to the webinar and have only 10 people show up, right? How do you mitigate the risk of that happening? I, if you know, you know, you talk to the partner, 
early on, you know, how many subscribers they're sending over, you know, what their audience size is, that kind of thing. Uh, you can tell how big a, a promotion is going to be. And we'll do the, the small promotions as well. So if you can only bring 25 people to a webinar, um, we'll still happily do it because we have it down to a great system. And we see it as we get to do a live demo to 25 people at once, which yep. is more efficient one-on-one. -on -one. So are, are there webinars sometimes where it's a small audience and you maybe, maybe you don't close anybody live, but you're basically doing a one-to-many demo and that's still a great use of time? Yeah, and I don't know that it's the highest leverage use of time, um, but yeah, we, we'll do some of those really small ones. And we like to think of it, there's these other like great up and coming bloggers who have uh, putting out great content, they're building audiences and no one's giving them the time of day. And we want to like treat them really well because they're, they're really going to be the next wave of who's who on the internet. They're how, just, do you, how do you find them? A lot of them are our, our customers. A lot of them reach out to us. You know, uh, anyone out there who's got, you know, a small audience to a giant audience and wants to do a webinar, you know, yeah. uh, we would love to do it. Yeah, very cool. All right, what do you pay? I'm curious, this is an interesting number. What do you pay per month just in terms of your affiliate payouts as an expense? Yeah, um, the last month I looked at it, so uh, it was about 44,000. Okay. Um, 45,000. It tends to, fund, to hang out about 10% of our revenue. Yep. Um, so we, about a quarter of our webinar, uh, a quarter of our revenue comes through the affiliate program. Um, and then we pay out a 30% uh, commission. And is that monthly as uh, long as the customer stays? Correct. Got it for life. Yeah, exactly. Got and it. you know, in this case, like we just did a big annual plan push. And so a bunch of our affiliates were like, Whoa, my check is like, I'm, my check is big. And it's cause yeah. yeah, we pay out the commission on that annual plan. And that's when your people go, Hey, you want to do another webinar in January? Yes, exactly. <laughs> awesome. All right, give us some more, just the, some of the hard data. I know we'll link to the bare metrics thing, but I want to just make sure this is all accurate and good to go. 2015, what was total revenue? Uh, 2015, it, it was uh, not significant. I don't even know the number, maybe $300,000. Okay, and what will you guys do in 2016 total revenue? Um, I would have to look at that as well. I tend to focus on the monthly numbers, but it's going to be, you know, three and a half, four million. Got it. Okay, three point five million. Uh, Talk to me about funding, self-funded or have you raised capital? Totally self-funded. Right. Um, and it was that an intentional choice, or did you just think, you know you had no need for capital or what? Yeah, it originally was an intentional choice, and then um, about the beginning of this year, we were at about a hundred k MRR and very short on cash. You know, like having bootstrapped the whole thing. How much, How much was in the crazy. bank? How low was it? 30,000. 30, and what were your expenses monthly? 97. Fix. Awesome. Fix. Okay. Wow. Okay. Good. So what'd you do? Um, so I, I went out and had conversations about, you know, I went, went down to Silicon Valley and, and met with a bunch of VCs and, and different investors and went down the road. Should we raise or not? At the time, uh, we were growing about 30% month over month. Um, and at a hundred K MRR, like we had all the numbers to justify a raise. Um, and I ended up having a conversation with, uh, Mike McDermott from FreshBooks. Yep. Uh, kind of randomly, I sat next to him at a conference and he just said like, look, you're growing so fast that if you can lock in your expenses, then you can grow your way into a cash cushion and into profitability. So we went from, I like that. I like not having to raise money. And he just basically gave us the permission to do it. Um, and so we went from having 30,000 in the bank running at like 3% profit margins Yep. in February to by July 1st, we had half a million in the bank and we're operating at a 50% profit margin. You just did a big annual push. So I assume this number is going to be fairly large relative to what's normal or weighted average over the past 12 months. But as of today, end of November, early December, 2016, how much money do you have in the bank and what's your gross profit? Yeah, the profit fluctuates a lot. We have 1.2 million in the bank right now. Okay. Um, and we have some big things to spend it on at the end of the year, but um, like we try to keep the profit at around 25,000 or sorry, not 25,000, 25% per month of month. Yeah. Well, you said you have some big expenses at the end of the month. I'm curious what those are. Well, since we, we got in a bunch of annual plan revenue, um, we're going to pay out a bunch of that by switching to annual plans with all of our vendors. Um, so servers, uh, you know, help scout slack, et cetera. Uh, out of the 1.2 million, have you already paid affiliates out of that or no? 
I'm. Let's see. We haven't paid the most, the latest month of affiliates. Okay, got it. So that would probably know, be a big chunk, right? Uh, yeah. 50 to 60,000. Okay, not say. too crazy. Not too crazy. Okay, what yeah, about gross? So we'll, we'll close out strong. Yeah, what about gross monthly customer turn? What are you at? Yeah, so this is actually an area that we have a lot of work to do. Um, we see that it's at 7.6% of yep. user churn. Um, and revenue churn was sitting, you know, 6.8 or so. Um, but actually, you know, if you switch to an annual plans, you're losing revenue. And so that counts towards revenue churn. So it just spiked in the last couple of days from, you know, 6.8 to about 8.2%. Yeah. You guys are like, yeah, you're right. That churn's really high, but you'll fit, you have enough cushion and, and you're growing so fast. It kind of doesn't matter right now, but it obviously it will, if you don't fix it, I'm sure you'll figure a way to fix it. But a business like yours, man, it's like, if you can figure out a way to really start driving aggressively expansion ARP across your current customer base, that's huge. And I imagine the number one kind of way to drive that is you probably have plans where people pay based off how big their list is. Are there any other kind of value based or usage based metrics you'll add to be able to, to give you kind of leverage to drive expansion MRR? Yeah, so expansion is definitely the biggest focus, uh, or it will be the biggest focus, like in the new year, because we want to get to that net negative churn, and we're about halfway there right now of expansion revenue canceling out churn. Great. Um, so for those other lever levers, we're trying to keep the pricing really simple and have it only be on how many subscribers you have, because that you know the more successful you are, the more I want to get paid. Um, and so I like that really simple pricing. So we're not going to add in like, Hey, for an extra hundred bucks a month, you can have this other feature. We're just going to focus on all of our education and our training and our phone support, like all that kind of thing on how can we get someone who's got 700 subscribers to be successful enough. So they tip over a thousand. So there, you know, uh, our MRR from them goes up by 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. Very cool. Well, that'll be a fun experiment, obviously, to run and optimize for. Um, last few kind of economics numbers here. What are you willing to spend for a customer? What's your current customer acquisition cost? You know, this is a number that I don't pay a lot of attention to. Um, and I know it's something that I should, but in the craziness of growth, I haven't uh, nailed it down because we've spent so little on, um, on paid acquisition. It just hasn't been a big channel for us so far yep. um, that I haven't dialed in those numbers. I mean, you know, so official channels take affiliates, all... right? Uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah. I cut you off. And that's just a 30%. And yeah, so, you know, that's not um, a number that I have to worry about, about too much. Oh, so I was going to say, officially, I should take, you know, all of our marketing and growth salaries and spend and all of that and divide it across the, you know, like the number of customers that that's bringing in. Um, and I just haven't done that yet. Yeah, but I'm I mean, if, if you're making, no, you're not. If you're making five, because it doesn't matter right now, right? If you're making 500 grand per month in top line MRR and you've got, did you said net margin was 25%? Yeah, at the moment. And it could be less. We're just investing, or sorry, it could be could be higher, but we're investing heavily. Yeah, so if you're, if you're, I mean, if your net margin's, you know, 25%, what are you looking at? I mean, you're looking at like 250, 250, well, half of 125 grand per month in free cash flow, right? So it's not like you're losing or burning cash. You know, your economics are, are working. Correct. Yeah. Very cool. Um, how big is the team and where are you guys based? Yeah, so we're a distributed team. I'm in Boise, Idaho. Uh, there's four other people here. We've got uh, four or five people in Nashville, Tennessee, and then we've got Portland, et cetera. Um, so all around, we're at 24 full-time people now. Okay. And what are you, add up all your monthly headcount expenses. What's that number? Oh, good question. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I'm curious what average salaries are, uh, depending on you know, these remote teams that aren't in big tech hubs where, you know, salaries are crazy. Yeah, it's definitely less than the the higher salary, you know, than San Francisco or New York. Yeah. And then last question here, uh, before we before we wrap up, uh, when did you launch the business? Was it, was it early 2015? So I actually launched it back in 2013. Okay. And it was kind of a side project, an effort there. And it kind of floundered around for about, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars a month for almost two years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a friend of mine, Heaton Shaw, who's famous in the SaaS world, said, like, dude, are you going to do something real with this or shut it down because this isn't working? And uh, so in October 2014, I decided, OK, let's take this seriously and put everything into it, shut down my other business. And that's when things really started to take off. Does he have any equity? Uh, he does not. That was just a conversation as we were walking back from dinner. That's so uh, one time. At I, a bet he beats, I bet he beats you up over that. 
I, I am very grateful uh, for him calling me <laughs> That's when you say like no that. comment, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Yeah, you don't, you know, Buffer took the approach of give all these big influencers a very small amount of equity so they're incentivized. I, your model is the same in terms of engaging those same people, but you're incentivizing them with just affiliate stuff, right? Or, or do these people have shares in the company? So there are two people that have, or we have two advisors who have shares in the company. Okay. So in all across the board, we don't do um, equity except in these two cases. Who is that, Pat uh, and Chris? Yeah, so Pat Flynn. Yeah. Um, he came on as an advisor. And then also a really good friend of mine, a longtime advisor, Ryan Delk. Who is responsible for growing uh, Gumroad, the e-commerce company? Very cool, Nathan. Well, hey, where's the best place for folks to connect with you online if they want to watch you as you keep growing this bad boy? Yeah, so convertkit.com has the blog and everything else. Sometimes I write at nathanberry.com, um, and that's got a lot of the stories of how we got profitable, all that other kind of thing. And I'm just Nathan Berry folks, on Twitter. I may have to stop doing the podcast. I will tell you why. I have found a business, and I'm ready to go all in. It's the one I want to take public by the time I turn 30. It's called the thetopinbox.com, and here's why I know it's going to be big, very big. There are so many other companies charging way too much for this right now. Yesware, Tout App, Boomerang. That's to do things like send later reminders and auto follow-ups for salespeople inside of your Gmail inbox. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it for free. We have so many people using it. It's growing so fast. And we do many of the things that salespeople love. We don't require people to leave the inbox to go log into a website. It's so simple to use. And I have to tell you, I mean, salespeople are like drooling over this thing. They're like licking the, the drool off their keyboard. They're loving this thing so much. The topinbox.com. Go install it now. Use it for free, people. Okay, I like you because you're listeners. Use it for free before I decide to start charging for it. Go right now to the top inbox. Box.com. Okay, Top Tribe, I have to tell you, many people go, Nathan, you came out of nowhere, your website's growing so fast, how'd you do it? The answer is simple. So I use HostGator, I don't know if you guys know that, but I use HostGator, and the reason I do, they have like about 4,500 free templates I can use, because I don't code, they've got a great e-commerce plugin, and guys, I bug the heck out of their support, they've got 24-7 support, which I love. So what I've done is I've worked with them. You guys know I make great deals. If you go to hostgator.com forward slash Nathan, you can sign up, get your own domain for 30% off and a 45-day money-back guarantee. Okay, again, I make great deals for you guys. Go to hostgator.com forward slash Nathan to grab that now. All right, Top Tribe, we'll link to that in the show notes at NathanLatka.com forward slash the top 528. Again, forward slash the top 528. All right, uh, Nathan, let's get to the famous five here. These are one word uh, answers. You ready? All right, let's do it. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Right now, Predictable Success. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, there isn't, but I'm taking suggestions because I need people going from like that 5 million ARR to 50 million. And number three, is there a favorite online tool you have, like TopTal? Uh, oh, man. I just started using Workable for hiring, and it's pretty awesome. All right, number four, yes or no? Do you get eight hours of sleep every night? No. I have kids. <laughs> I was going to say, what's your situation? Married, single, do you have kids? Yeah, I married two kids. They're two boys, five and two and a half. All right, wow. And how old are you? Uh, 26. All right. Well, holy mackerel. Okay. So you got a full plate. So last question, yep. take us back six years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, double down sooner. Like don't try to do a bunch of things at once. Do pick one thing, do it really, really well. Top tribe. There you have it. Double down sooner. Pick one thing, do it really, really well from Nathan Berry, founder of convert kid really got serious about 16, 17 months ago was doing about a, a one to two K per month for about a year and a half before he took it seriously. Now in December, 2016, over 10,000 monthly paying customers paying an average of 48 bucks a pop. So about 500 grand in MRR after doing just 300 grand in total 2015 revenue gross customer turn. They're still working on it at 7.6% monthly. Their team of 24 based across many, many cities, including Idaho, 
and Nashville, helping professional bloggers email market and grow their list more effectively. Nathan, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks for having me. If you enjoyed Nathan today, go back and listen to Kyle yesterday. Kyle's company, Proposify, just hit 150 grand in monthly recurring revenue, is doing 100% year-over-year growth, and has 3,200 customers, so they help send proposals more efficiently. Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google Ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money, HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Okay, Top Tribe, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, before you listen to any other episodes, subscribe on iTunes right now for your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday. 